Today, I want to talk to you about setting up this Skywatcher Star Adventurer Pro on a tripod. Um, I want to talk to you about the steps that it takes to set this up. And also, we'll talk about setting up the camera brackets and the bracketry to use when setting up for astrophotography. So stay tuned, we'll go through all this together. All right, before we go through the steps of mounting this to your tripod, um, just want to talk about what powers the device, obviously batteries, um, but the AA batteries, I recommend using rechargeable batteries, just pure and simply because it's much cheaper than buying batteries all the time. The batteries do last quite a while in this device. I've never, I've never really run them out of batteries before, but what I do do is top them up um, with my rechargeable wall adapter that the batteries came with. I picked it up from, well in Australia we got Woolworths, um, so I picked them up from there for about, I think it was about $40, $45. They're not the cheapest, but overall, my lifetime of replacing batteries in this, it would work out much cheaper. Um, I do, however, have issues pulling the batteries out of here because you can't get your fingers in there. Um, it's quite a tight sort of design. So I found that I use the back of the lid um, and just lock it in there to flick the battery out. Makes it much easier. You can do that for all the batteries. So yeah, that's just one cheat that I found to make my life a bit easier. Um, but yeah, now we'll go through the steps of mounting this to, to the tripod. Right, the first stage or the first thing you're really going to need is a tripod of some description. I'm sure that you guys have got one um, in your kit. Um, you're going to need something with a bull head for this um, Skywatcher to mount to. So most tr um, tripods that I know of have a unscrewable bull head. So unscrew this bull head here to expose the thread on top of the tripod. So that thread there is the same size thread that's required to mount, to mount your wedge to. So unscrew your bull head is the first step. Then we want to mount your wedge to the top of the tripod. So you can screw that in there. Um, there is another option here, another step that I like to do before I mount this wedge to the tripod, and that's using a leveling base, um, which I've purchased from, or was, I got it from Amazon, and it's a newer brand, N-E-E-W-E-R, newer. So I screw that on there first, and then I put the wedge on top, and that just gives me the ability to level the tripod without having to use the legs, um, which is very painful. So here, you can just wind the dials up and down and it's easy. The next step is to mount your, your Skywatcher to the top of the bracket here. So you wanna make sure you mount it the right way. If you mount it that way, then it's not gonna work. So the way to tell is just to wind your dial up to the latitude that you require. You can find the latitude on your Polar Align Pro app or your um, even your GPS, it will give you your current latitude. So mine's around 45 degrees. Um, so I will wind that to 45 to get it in the right area. So once you see which directions it's pointing in, then you can slide your, tri your um, Skywatcher over easy. Um, and then from there, that you sort of set up. All right, so we want to talk about mounting our camera to this device. So there's a couple of different brackets and options that you can use. The first option, which I generally don't use, but it is a quick option in the field to set up, is using this bull head mount. So what you do is you remove your lens cap in there first, which I've already done, um, as you can see. Um, and now we mount this bracket. I'll move it so you can see it straight on top of the front of the, the sky tracker here. There's a little locator on this green tab. You'll see there's a dimple in there. So the thread fits in that dimple so it doesn't slide off with your camera on it. So no one wants that. I certainly don't. Once it's on there, um, you can see that some people have mounted um, the ball head directly to the front of the sky tracker here, but it doesn't give you the full movement that you require. It's just gonna foul 
and you're not going to get up into the sky far enough and it's quite annoying. So um, what I recommend is for you guys to use a Z bracket. And this Z bracket is made by Move, Shoot, Move. Um, and you just screw it on the front here. And I'll show you once it's in the right position, what it will do. So it will give you a nice flat platform to mount your bull head to here now. So once you've, when you've unscrewed your bull head, you'll notice that the thread size is actually quite, um, it's the larger thread size. So you're gonna have to get a reducer, um, which comes with most bull heads anyway. So you screw the reducer into the bottom of the, uh, the bull head here. Um, and then I usually just, well, I mount my bull head on top of the Z bracket, like so. A little bit fiddly, but. So I mount that on top of there and do it up. The next thing you want to make sure of is to make sure that you've got enough, well, you've got your slots lined up. There's your slots at the back of the camera or wherever you, the direction you want to point in, only because you're not going to run out of movement and you're going to foul on the Star Tracker. So that's really all you're going to need to set up with this sort of setup. There is no counterweight or anything in it. It's just that setup. So I prefer personally to use the counterweight, but we'll go through that one in a second. Option two, the best option in my opinion is to use the declaration bracket. So First of all, that's how it will look in your kit, but what I've done is I've removed this fine tuning um, base. This is more for, for telescopes. And I use it like this. So what it's done now is exposed a second ball thread or a thread for a ball head. Um, so it gives you the ability to use this bracket with a, with a um, counterweight. So same deal, we slip it over the top. Then we can mount the Counterweight. So they also tell you to unscrew this, um, which I don't like because I've dropped it on my toe once and it really hurts. So I don't unscrew that. The first thing I do is slip it over the top and do it up and then just spin it on. So it's really easy to do it that way. You don't drop anything. So you spin him up like that. And then the second step, which is part of the first step I showed you is to mount the Z bracket directly to the top of the declaration bracket. And there you go. You've got a good base with plenty of movement if you need it. So um, once you lock your Z bracket off so it doesn't move around, um, you have plenty of movement to shoot the sky and whatever direction you need to shoot in. So we've kind of locked off a few different axes, um, which is which is great. So we've got the side movement. So you want that to be able to keep your top of your base level as the Star Tracker moves. Um, we've also got left and right, and we've also got up and down. So um, yeah, that's pretty much all you need to shoot um, the sky with, and you can also do panoramas with this setup here as well. So that's that's all you really need for it to work the way you need it to work. All right, the next step is to mount your camera to the top of the, um, the sky tracker. So before I do that, I like to just double check everything because I'm paranoid about dropping my camera on the ground. So I check, make sure everything's tight and firm and we'll mount the camera to the top of the sky tracker. So I like to use, leave the thread here at the front because I'm just going to foul on everything later on if I put it at the back. And on this ball head, I've also got a level bubble at the back here. So that kind of helps out a little bit too. Um, so as you can see, again, there is oops, plenty of movement for this camera to stick right up into the sky if needed um, and also shoot foreground if needed too. So we've got all the angles that we require to shoot a panorama.
Now the camera is fully set up on the Sky Watcher. The next step is to polar align the Sky Watcher to the celestial pole. Um, if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, that's the Sigma Octans constellation. Um, if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, you've got the Polaris Australis star, which you're very lucky because it's so bright you can actually see it with your naked eye. Here, we can't see anything. So um, to polar align the tracker, I've got a um, polar alignment video for you guys to check out. It's polar aligning this star tracker in three minutes using a phone app. So do check that out. I'll leave that in the comments um, below for you guys to find it easy. Um, in the meantime, please like and subscribe to my channel. Um, it helps me get out in front of more people like yourselves and help more people with their astrophotography journey. So thanks for tuning in and I'll see you in my next video.